So I'm out here picking up a different car, Zach, but I found the bug that we were bidding on, the bug that we lost today. And it's a really decent project, especially considering it has a clean title. Hood smash, bumper smash. They say you need a new bumper. I get a new hood. I'm sure those are cheap enough parts. New headlight right here. You would have been able to refinish that. I feel really bad showing you this, Zach, um, but this was a decent project. The worst part I saw this is this quarter smash, but it comes to a bug. Look, this all just comes loose. You'd be able to pull that whole piece off slap on a new one especially if you found one in a junkyard that was already black let's check out the interior real quick eh, not the worst a little cleanup some floor mats and you got a halfway decent car that is bearing that the thing even flips over let's see here completely dead don't know if that's battery or anything else well man sorry we didn't get this one i'll be on the lookout for the next this was a video message I left my friend Zach, and I wasn't being very honest. When I'm in need of help with any of my projects, Zach has been the one guy I can rely on. He drives from over 80 miles away to lend a hand, and his work is always top notch. So when he asked if I could help him bid on this Turbo Beetle, a car he's always wanted, the auction, I told him I would. But I figure I'd do him one better and just buy it for him. As a Volkswagen enthusiast, Zach is obsessed with the Beetle. His first car was a Beetle. His second car was a Beetle. And his third car, you guessed it, a Beetle. Currently, Zach has been focusing his time and resources on his YouTube channel, which meant giving up his beloved bugs to fund the projects for his content. Zach's talents know no limits. He loves custom projects and restores objects that are way past their prime, like this pontoon boat that he picked up for less than the price of a used iPhone. This Turbo Beetle is in pretty rough shape. It looks like someone drove it like they stole it because someone actually did steal it. This was a bank owned theft recovery car, so God only knows what's wrong with it. Either way, I know Zach will treat it like a piece of treasure, give it a new life and a good home. At this point, he has no idea that I bought it and I can't wait to surprise him. Crank it. Dad, okay. Let's see. Jeez, the battery is almost new in the thing. Yeah. Whoa. The more I look at this car, the more it grows on me. I didn't notice the silver mirror caps before. Uh, this is some sort of addition, like a launch edition. This is the first year of the new body style. And... Before we leave it for the night, because it's about to get dark, I've got to roll that window up. As we saw, the electronics do power on, but the drivers were telling me that the car just cranks. But their battery jumper was dead. And before we really try and start it, we got, oh yeah, there's a lot of oil in there and it's, it's dirty, so nobody's messed around with it. You know, clean oil is a good sign, but clean oil can also be a really bad sign. Uh, if somebody, tried and doctored up something uh, kind of bad you'll have clean oil so that's not bad and then we've got do have coolant in there it's been a few weeks since i've seen this thing let's hook up the jump starter they told me it cranks but it does not start all right keys in the ignition first thing let's turn this and let's move the window up all right foot on the brake hold on Ugh. That sounds a bit weak. Then again, the battery is completely dead. Zach's strong suit is the artistic side of car building. When it comes to paint, body, and design, he really excels in it. Uh, so I think this is the perfect project beetle for him, except potentially the non-runner status of it. Uh, Zach doesn't really get into mechanical repairs. He much again prefers the paint body work side of things. So my goal is to help him with that since I really enjoy diagnosing these mechanically damaged mysteries. I don't know how good I am at it, but I've got a good assistant that I plan on helping us we're gonna break out Carly this is the diagnostic reader I've used on countless amount of Volkswagens BMWs my Mini Cooper and this has generally pinpointed the exact issues that we have with these mechanical mysteries and its intuitive app has made it really simple for me to figure out how good or bad the overall condition of one of these cars are and in a lot of cases it will even provide additional guidance to help you fix the problem like here on this auction BMW M5 it brought up 66 errors and under any single one of them you can tap more information which provides links 
links to support articles found on the internet for this exact issue. This was incredibly helpful on my poorly running VW GTI, which Carly found a single code for a faulty manifold runner. It helped us pinpoint the issue in literally a minute or two and even found support video showing us exactly how to perform the job. Carly is especially powerful on BMW, Mini Cooper, Volkswagens, and Audis. If you own one of these cars, you gotta check it out, and I'll drop a link down in the description box along with a discount code. How about this ridiculous new service light feature that's being implemented on more and more cars? They tell you the only way you can reset it is going to the dealer, but not with Carly. All you gotta do is plug it in and literally three taps later, that wrench light is gone. The adapter plus a premium membership will cost you less than one trip to the dealership for a simple diagnosis. And did you know that many cars hide features for different countries? Carly can unlock these features with dealer level coding, something that you generally can only find on Diag tools costing over a thousand bucks. On my 3 Series BMW, I coded out that pesky warning screen that forces you to accept it every single time you start the car. Now it just boots right up to the main menu. And on my mate Radarosa's Mini Cooper, he changed his startup screen to the Rolls Royce theme with chimes and all. Carly has so many fun but also useful features, including one that will detect odometer rollback on certain cars. It's a must if you're shopping pre owned, and it will likely save you money just after its first use. And since Carly regularly updates their app, that means you get the best user experience with new features on the regular and increased compatibility with many other makes and models. To see what Carly can do for you, go ahead and click my link in the description box below. Use their menu to select your make and model, and it will tell you exactly the features that are enabled for your car. And if Carly works out for you, well, you can save an additional 20% off at checkout using code SAMCRACK. Now, I gotta give a huge thanks to Carly for bringing dealer level diagnostic and service to the DIYer like me, saving me a ton of money and for also sponsoring this video. Today is the big day. Zach's on his way right now. I don't think he's got a clue what he's in for. This is his new car and I can't wait to give it to him. And just to give you a little time perspective on things, the last time I spoke to him about the Volkswagen was two months ago, 60 days ago, I sent him that video that I showed you earlier when I was at the auction. That was the day the sale completed, the day I won the car. And then uh, this thing was delivered like five weeks ago. It's been sitting in the same spot over a month. And well, I tried to hook up a uh, strap to my truck to the front of the tow hook on this car and the hood is stuck at this point. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about in a second. But I think that this will be completely out of his mind and a real shock when he shows up. Now I got in here just a few minutes ago and I went to pop the hood and look. So there's a cord that runs in here to the front of the hood. When you pull it, it pops the hood like on every other car and it's clearly broken. I don't know if it's broken here probably, or it could be broken where it meets at like a junction right above the fender there. And I need the hood open so I could throw a battery jumper on it so that I could get accessory power to the car and stick it in neutral. But none of that's gonna happen now. So I'm gonna leave my truck parked like right here. When you're trying to surprise someone, you have no clue how it's gonna go. But I basically have just created this big distraction. I've got the golf cart with the hood popped on the Ford, make it look like I'm working on the Ford out here in the middle of the field. If you guys watch me, you know that I work on cars all the time out in the middle of the field. I'm gonna ask him to come take a look under the hood of the truck with me when he's clearly gonna spot this. And then I've got the camera conveniently placed on the hood here to grab his reaction. It's getting ready to be go time. We got about 10 minutes till he shows up. So let's get ready. All right, it's go time. He's here. What problems? Come take a look at this truck. This is perfect. He parked perfectly here. <sighs> Zach, I'm kidding. What do you think? What do you think? Oh. Congratulations. You've been set up. This is yours. Wait, this is the same one? That this is the one that we lost. This is the one. Wait, so you didn't lose? I didn't lose it. I won it. You liar. <laughs> this was like a month ago. No. no. Two months ago. Two months ago. You put it off for this long? Yeah. Well, I've been telling you, come, come, we, you know. Yeah. I played it pretty no. good, right? You didn't think anything of this, did you? I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> you said Euro car. We're working on Euro cars. Euro cars. Garbage Euro cars. We've this already got the garbage. first problem. This is not garbage. It's actually, well, it depends whether we get it running or not. That's the big question. I saw the wheels pulling up. I was like, what does he have back here? The body yes. is a perfect project. Because this stuff is like easy. I'm like shaking. <laughs> no one's ever done anything like this for me. Look, 
You're, you live over an hour away. We've only got limited time to try and get this thing running. Let me show you the first issue, all right? All right tell me. The first issue is that this car was delivered. It cranks, it doesn't start with a battery jumper box. When it showed up, the guys, the tow truck drivers already had the hood popped. The hood is now locked and the battery's dead. Or the, the, hood, the hood release doesn't work. So I think it's a combination of the smash in the front and we got two options, I think, at this point. You can feel, you yeah, can, I can feel, feel it. Right here. But I think we either go and get a jack, we get underneath here. We might have to start ripping apart this bumper, which is already gone. Mm -hmm. Or we take off the wheel and go in through the fender liner. Okay. <laughs> Ready? I'm just... Let's go get some tools. All right, what do we got here? T something Torx, and then these need like a little pick to pull them out, right? The tool is probably in the trunk, which is locked because of the... Oh, is it locked? Well, because the... Hold on, how do you... It's all electronic. Hold on, what's that? There's some stuff back there, some goodies. Oh, this is all the... If there were $100 bills in there, those were mine, so. <laughs> now it's my car now, right? Well, yeah, but I, you know, I just used oh, it yeah. to place some gold bars, potentially oh, yeah. in the trunk. <laughs> if they're still there, I might've moved them out, I don't remember. We can keep this a secret for two months. Yeah, although if you ever drove by, you would've seen it, because it was sitting right up front. When you come back next, we're gonna have to plant some grass seed here. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's been sitting here for two months, yeah. too. Oh, perfect. See, this is why I waited for you. Yeah, I remember, I'm trying to remember how I put bumper together, because I, the whole front end together on my old one. I think in there was like two or three all underneath. The what is this right here? What is this? Is that it? That feels like a strong cable right there. Hold on. Oh, oh, shimmy it, shimmy it. Is that it? Or no? Or am I pulling on an electrical wiring harness here? You're gonna be there. <laughs> you know, I think it has to do with this because of the misshaping yeah. here. What it's just I that it's. And then you want me to, it just is latched, is the, are you, you would get a new hood, right? Yeah. It's cut. It. Yeah. All right, new game plan here. Zach is attacking things from the inside. If we take all this trim off, you see we've got the uh, door sill and then the trim that goes to the hood release cable. If there's an issue with the handle connected to the cable, we could find it, maybe just tug on the cable from inside. The fact that every single right fuse here. box has been messed with in this car is very suspect. Oh, is there stuff messed with in there? Well, remember, whenever I sent you the oh, video, yeah, yeah. the one under the hood was open, and then I just noticed it whenever the car was delivered, the one inside here is open as well. Yeah. I'm gonna lift on the hood while you pull that thing. Go pull that cable. It's not gonna work, but not working. Yeah, there's no tension anywhere. We would feel something. Zach, it's your car. We're running out of options though. So we just cut it off. You want to try pry bar we'll first? Pry Zach's going to have to replace the bumper and the hood on this car anyway. Uh, the only thing we really want to keep intact is the emblem here because that costs eh, probably 40, 50 bucks the Volkswagen dealership I would expect. Uh, I think I paid 80 bucks for it whenever I had my old. Oh. Beetle, but yeah. that was years ago. So just stay away from the emblem. Stay away from that. Pry the heck out of it and probably just going to have to bust the, uh, the latch open. Zach, you're doing a really good job straightening the dent, yeah. actually. Might be able to save this Paintless one. dent. <laughs> Jeez, there's so much space now. Do 
Dude, no wonder these cars are never stolen. They're so hard to break into. This should be the Volkswagen anti-theft commercial. But wait, this car was stolen. This specific one was stolen. Oh, burned me out already. <laughs> The wheels are really nice. There it is. Well, Stuck. now we're where we need to be. The battery. Look, this has a 19, 2019 battery that's been sitting for several months, so it's probably still not good. But um, yeah, let's get a jumper on it. This is the fuse box that yeah. was definitely open. Almost as soon as we got the hood open, we continued to strike out. We got a few start attempts from my battery jumper boxes, but we drained the juice on both of them very quick, and the engine didn't sound healthy at all. sounds really bad. To make things easier, we towed the Beetle closer to the garage so we could access our tools and jump the car off my truck. All right, where is this guy? Oh. Look, this has been messed with. Has it? Uh, it looks like it. Someone's definitely pulled out these fuses too. All right, it's lit up. Once we got some stable power to the Beetle, we were able to plug in Carly and run a diagnostic test to see what trouble codes the engine had generated, and there were quite a few. 12 issues found already with 7%, 15, 14, percent, wow. That's pretty cool. You gotta get one, because you can like code and do a bunch of cool stuff with the coding too, yeah. Very bad, okay, we got airbag, dude, the, everything's just, screwy but i want to specifically see engine what does it say tensioning bow in stowed position p0442 sounded familiar so i tapped the more information option on it and it was a code for an issue with the gas cap we noticed when we were out here this car was missing its gas cap so that's what that first code is for We've got a, uh, another beetle out here, so we're just going to grab it from this one. While a missing gas cap will cause an EVAP system leak, I don't think it would stop the car from running. We went and borrowed a gas cap from another Volkswagen family product, and uh, it didn't help. Going back to the codes generator from Carly, there was one that really stood out, and it gave me a very bad feeling. P000A, a code related to the camshaft timing. Anytime you see timing codes on a car that doesn't start, it's bad news. So we knew it was time to dig a bit deeper. All right, Zach just pulled the coil cover off and we're going to try and do a quick compression test. That way, in case something is grossly wrong with the engine of this car, we're not spending a bunch of time running around looking at a million other things and uh, just go straight to the issue. Now, one good thing is these are all Volkswagen OEM coil packs. Look, first of all, you got oil on that one. So, we need a valve cover gasket. Ooh, what the yeah. heck? Nah, it's just oil. But that's... All, right, all our spark plugs look about the same. Car needs a valve cover gasket, but it doesn't look like they're fouled or anything. Zach, go ahead and uh, crank it over. Stop, stop. Either we got a problem or you got a bad engine. One or the other, hold on. All right, go ahead again. Stop. Nah, stop it. 
At this point, we were pretty confident we had a catastrophic issue on our hands. Switching over to the scope camera, we got a clear view of what exactly happened here. These half moon shaped marks on the pistons are valve marks. Unfortunately, this engine is a goner. And while you could rebuild it, it would just be more expensive and more time consuming than finding a good quality used one. If we switch the orientation of our scope camera, you can see the valves hung open on every cylinder. While it might be normal to see a couple of them open, most of them are open because they were bent when the cylinder hit them and they will no longer seat. This is why we got zero on all cylinders during our compression test. What I thought would have been a fun auction surprise turned into another auction blow up. At this point, Zach would have probably preferred I got him an ugly sweater and a pair of socks. It started to get late and we were losing daylight, so Zach went home, but not in his new car. You excited, man? I'm so excited. Today's the big day you bring it home. You know, it could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been worse. No, no, it really couldn't have been worse, Zach. I could have paid for it. I, well, okay. Well, it could have had a bad engine and dual bad dual clutch transmission. Uh, but, Zach, I got one last thing to show you. I made a call to my friends over at J&J &J Auto Wrecking here, and they sent me a video. Hey Zach, we heard through the grapevine you're going to be needing an engine for your uh, Volkswagen Beetle project. So I thought I'd give you an upgrade here and set you up with this twin turbo 12 cylinder out of a giant Volkswagen. I heard you and Sam can probably make that fit. Nah, but just kidding man, we got you set up right here with a 2 liter turbo, video tested, ready to go. Uh, we're just going to send the bill to Sam, so Merry Christmas dude. Ready to go. Uh, we're oh, just going to so send awesome. the bill to Sam, so Merry Christmas dude. This is too much, it's too nice. Best Christmas ever. Well, you would who would have thought in 2020 I'd have the best Christmas ever. <laughs> you got a good point. Well, a motor will show up at your house. Hey, you still got to do the work here, I Zach. Still got to do the work. All right, so do make make sure you follow Zach Ultimate Rebuilds, where uh, a lot more of this Beetle is going to be torn down. But when it's all done, man, I know it's going to look incredible. Yeah, I'm really excited. It's going to be completely different. It's not going to look anything like it does right now. Well, it better not look like it does now. <laughs> I've bought quite a few cars at the auction site on scene that are non-runners, and typically when they have some sort of visible damage like with the Volkswagen, uh, they're decent mechanically. So to have the double whammy of a crash car with a bad engine was a complete shock when I stuck the scope down the cylinder and saw the valve marks on the pistons. I felt so bad for Zach, and I just couldn't saddle him with the uh, bill for a new engine here. But we got to give a huge thanks to the real stars here, and that's J&J Auto Wrecking. They were my first call because they special in these European enthusiast cars and they coincidentally had a Beetle there and the engine out of it with only like 60,000 miles on it and they video test every single one of their major components like these engines so you know you're gonna get something solid something that works and then they warranty them on top of that and they've got a really cool YouTube channel where they show you some of the crash cars that they bring in and show you the parts that they're planning on selling off of it, it kind of gives you an inside look to the parts recycling facility industry and of course at a really cool wrecking yard that deals in enthusiast car so go ahead and check out J&J &J Auto Wrecking and of course if you want to check out the complete rebuild and transformation of Zach's Beetle go follow him over at Ultimate Rebuilds. Now guys none of this would be possible without you watching so you have no idea how much it means to me that I'm able to do this because of you. You guys are the real gift givers here and I can't thank you enough for it. Until next time Hopefully we clear out this field a little bit. It's getting a little crowded. Maybe we trade a few cars for one that is really special. I'll catch you very soon. <laughs>